In the last couple of videos, we have solved the Schrodinger equation for the particle in a 1D box model, and we have attempted to interpret what the solutions to the equation uh, are. Now, what we actually do is try to further uh, interpret those solutions by applying the model to understand the behavior of uh, the electrons in a real molecule. Okay, so the real molecules that we're going to be looking at are called polyenes, which are simply uh, molecules that have alternated single and, dou and double bonds. The simplest of these molecules will be butadiene, which is uh, this molecule. Okay, where you have here C, H, H, that's a C, H, C, H, C, H, H. And again, this is just the uh, smallest member of the family uh, that can have three bonds, four bonds, five bonds, and so forth. Okay, so again, this will be butadiene. And it turns out that the electrons that are in the pi cloud of this molecule uh, actually can be modeled quite well uh, with the particle in a 1D box model. Okay, the idea is that the electrons in the pi cloud are going to be moving uh, essentially in a line. These molecules are linear. And if you're very long, you can actually see that again, these electrons are essentially going to be moving in a line. Now, uh, the, uh, the potential can be approximated to be constant while the uh, electrons are moving uh, inside the molecule, but if they attempt to go outside from the molecule, then the potential energy increases a lot because they are not attracted by the nuclei uh, anymore. So to a good approximation, uh, those electrons can be reasonably modeled uh, by uh, a 1D box in which, again, you just can move this way. And again, the potential is constant or zero inside the box and infinity outside the box. All right, so let's see uh, how do we apply or what experiments we can do to prove that the particle in a 1D box model is actually reasonable. The uh, experiment that we're going to apply here is uh, going to be spectroscopy. And this is kind of our first uh, uh, point of contact with uh, spectroscopy. Here's the main idea in spectroscopy, especially in UVBs where you actually have electrons. Okay, so uh, when you have, when you think about electrons, okay, you can do the following. Uh, you can shine photons of an appropriate energy, H nu, okay, and what might happen is that absorption of that energy might be able to promote the electron from a low energy state to a high energy state, okay? This is called uh, the initial state and that is called the final state. What has to happen in order to observe an absorption of this photon is that the energy of the photon, this H nu of the photon, has to be identical, also called resonant, with the difference in energy between these two, two states uh, that you're bridging. Okay, so this is going to be our experiment. We're going to be sending uh, electromagnetic radiation due to these photons to this molecule, and those pi electrons that are moving according to the 1D box model, we're going to be able to cause these excitations, okay? And because we can predict what the energy gap between states is with the uh, particle in a 1D box model, and we can measure it, in the experiment, then we're going to have a one-to-one -one comparison and see how good this energy quantization that we have in the model actually is. Okay? All right, so there are a few uh, things that we have to uh, worry about before we actually get started with this. The first one is uh, how do these electrons uh, populate uh, uh, those energy states? Okay? If we go back to the particle in a 1D box model, we actually uh, say that uh, here the potential is infinity, and then uh, the potential inside the box is zero or constant, will give you the same result, okay, and that is the length of the box. And we have that, well, this is the first, first state is equal to one, that will be the second state is equal to two, this will be the third state is equal to three, and then the fourth state is equal to fourth. And again, we know that those energy states uh, increase quadratically with a quantum number, okay? So the idea is, in a molecule like butadiene, uh, how many electrons uh, do we have, and how do those electrons occupy these energy states that we have right here? All right, so again, uh, this molecule has very many electrons, but we're only interested in the pi electrons. But it turns out that the pi cloud is formed by uh, the electrons that are in a 2p uh, orbital that is perpendicular to this plane, coming in and out of the plane, and we will see later on that each carbon atom contributes one electron to this cloud, okay? So we're actually gonna have that, you have one, two, three, four carbon atoms, that means that you have four electrons in the pi cloud, okay? So we have four pi electrons in this molecule. 
If the molecule had six carbon atoms, then you will have six electrons in the pi cloud, and so forth. Okay, great. So the question is, well, where are these electrons? What type of energy states are they going to have? We will also learn that two electrons can have the same energy state as long as their spins are anti-parallel, which means that uh, the first electron will go to the lowest energy state, and you can uh, have a second electron in that energy state if its spin is anti-parallel. Okay? Now, uh, the third electron will go uh, to the second uh, lowest energy state, more stable, and the uh, fourth electron will go there. So this is the experiment that we're going to do right now. We're going to shine now uh, electromagnetic radiation. This will be in the UV. Okay. And we're going to try to promote uh, energy excitations, uh, electronic excitation from these low energy states to these high energy states. And there are various that we can actually uh, cause. For example, you can excite that electron from state two to, elect uh, to state three, uh, or this electron from state one to state three, uh, 2 to 4, 1 to 4, and so forth. Okay? But the one that we usually measure is the one that is of absolute lowest energy. Okay, so the electronic transition that is of lo lowest energy, the one that costs less, is the one from 2 to 3. As a matter of fact, we call this the HOMO. We'll, we will call this the HOMO, and we'll call this the LUMO. Okay, as highest occupied uh, orbital, which is the same thing as energy state, and lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, which is exactly the same thing as an ideal state. Okay, so uh, then the idea here is that uh, the resonance condition is going to come when the energy of the photons that we're shining is identical to the difference in energy between the two states that we're bridging. The final state will be 3, and the lowest state will be 2 for this lowest energy electronic transition. Okay, so in principle we're actually ready to solve because we know what the energies of these states are according to the particle and one box model. Right? Notice that the energy of uh, state 3 will be 3 squared, 8 squared, over 8 and L squared. And the energy of state 2 is 2 squared, 8 squared, over 8 and L squared. Okay. Right, we can consolidate this and do this is equal to uh, 9 minus 4 is going to, be going to be equal to 5, 8 squared, over 8 and L squared. Okay. So in principle, we actually know what the H is, we know what the mass is, these are electrons, so the, uh, this quantity is known. We just have to think about what the length of the box is. And what we're going to say is that the length of the box is going to be equal to the sum of these bonds. Right? So you have two double bonds, one single bond, and then what happens is that well, when the electrons are moving along this molecule, they don't stop right at the carbon atom. They actually can extend a little bit further this way, a little bit further that way. Okay, so uh, to take all that into consideration, we're going to assume that the length of this molecule is going to be equal to uh, 1.54 Armstrong, which is the length of a single bond, plus 1.35 uh, Armstrong, which is the length of a double bond, multiplied by the number of carbon, of, uh, number of carbon atoms over 2. And again, this is the length. Uh, this length can be applied to any of these uh, uh, members of the family of the molecules, right? So if you have butadiene, this is a 4. If you have hexatriene, the molecule with the 6 carbon atoms, uh, they will have here a 6, and so forth. And again, this length considers as electrons are moving in between the uh, terminal carbon atoms here, okay, but also a little bit more, okay? And again, all of that is considered into that expression. Okay, so for butadiene, we find that the length of the molecule is going to be 5.78 Armstrong. Okay? So then we actually have all that we need to solve this problem. Okay, that is going to be 5 times 6.626, 6 10 to the minus 34 joules per second, uh, and all of these squared divided over uh, 8ml squared. It's actually plugging the actual values here. That is going to be 9.11. 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, and then the length squared. Okay, notice that we have to transform this to a uh, meter, so that is going to be 5.78, 10 to the minus 10 meters, and all of this is squared. Okay? All of this will be the energy, uh, h nu of the photon, or we can actually uh, equal this to uh, c over lambda, and then solve for lambda, which will be the wavelength of the photons that you need to shine 
in order to be able to promote the electronic transition from 2 to 3. Okay? So when you solve that, you find that this lambda is equal to 220 nanometers. Okay? And again, this comes directly from the model. We actually have not, have not done an experiment uh, at all. Okay, the experiments, what we do is we simply send uh, well, uh, photons of various wavelengths. Okay? Notice this is the same thing as HD over lambda. Okay, so we vary lambda. We start with, uh, say, 400 nanometers and then 399 nanometers, 398, 397, and so forth. And then what will happen is that all those photons will pass through the molecule without any absorption unless the energy of the photon is resonant with uh, the difference in energy between these two states. Okay, so what will happen in this experiment is that, well, uh, if this captures reality, then what will happen is that you will send a photon of 223 nanometers, it will not get absorbed because it's an energy slightly lower than this, and 222, nothing happens, 221, nothing happens, at 220, you satisfy the resonance condition and that photon will be absorbed, and then you observe a peak in your uh, UV spectrum. 219, nothing happens, no resonance anymore, 218 and so forth. Okay, so you should observe a peak at 220 nanometers. In reality, what happens is that this uh, lambda is exactly 217 nanometers, which is a really small difference compared to what you actually have in the model. Okay, but this indicates that uh, the model is actually reasonably good for these molecules, and again, uh, those solutions to the Jordan-Gate equation for the particle and the box model actually are faithful to reality to some extent. Now, we cannot prove easily whether the wave functions are what they should be or whether the probability distributions are what they should be, but notice that here we're probing one of the solutions of the Jordan-Gate equation, which is the energy, and that energy is coupled to the wave function intimately. When you get the energy values, you also get the wave function. Okay, they are coupled. Okay, so if you can prove that the energy term is correct, then it follows that the wave function should also be correct, even if we cannot prove it directly. Okay, so again, uh, this type of spectrospo spectroscopic experiments with the pi electrons in polyenes are direct proof that our solution to the Schrodinger equation for uh, the particle in a one box model is actually uh, sensible. Okay, and all of our interpretation, including the nodal uh, aspect of some of those wave functions, the fact that sometimes you have lobes of amplitude, probabilities, and sometimes you have zero probability, that still holds true. Okay, so again, that's just a, a, in, in a summary. In this video, we, has, we just have applied uh, the particle in a one box model to understand the pi electrons in molecules called polyenes, and it turns out that we can reproduce quite faithfully the experimental uh, spectrum, UV spectrum of these molecules with the particle in a one box model.